Now, um, the next task for the lab is to select the embryo. So which one we select? Because mostly we have more than one or two. And if we go back to our, the target slide, we have to have a single pregnancy, singleton. And to achieve that, you know, we don't want to transfer more than one embryo. Uh, <clears throat> So there are different methods. Uh, one is morphological assessment, where by conventionally going, you know, using our scoring system and for morphological assessment, but just by looking at it, we give some grades and um, select the embryos based on that. So that is more conventional method. Um, another method of selecting embryos is by looking at their morphokinetics using uh, time-lapse imaging. So I think I remember Dr. Nakajima or one of the speakers showed a time-lapse um, video of an embryo, how it was developing from um, fertilization and onward. Um, <clears throat> more lately, there are some software available. So based on the algorithms and AI, if you call it, um, there are certain machines which would tell you, okay, this is the embryo with the best possibility of implanting but it's not very common. People are using, but not, it's not very common. Um, the other method of selecting embryos is a genetic testing, which is basically you test embryo or the polar body. The polar body, that little structure which shows you if it's a mature egg or not. Um, you study them for uh, the chromosomal comp components and um, for monogenic diseases and also for polygenic disease screening. Um, another uh, non-invasive technique is also emerging where um, cell-free DNA is analyzed to determine the genetic makeup of the embryo. Okay, so <clears throat> a few words about embryo biopsy because this is such a popular and powerful technique. Um, embryo biopsy and its clinical implications. So um, I think I have a video of this, if I can play. Can somebody help with this? This has to be. Is that, is that yeah. it was yeah. OK, oh, it's moving. So, so this is a blastus stage embryo. It's so an ICM here. The embryo is held under suction pressure. A gate or a gap was created here to get the drove cells out, and this is a target for the laser. So cells are aspirated out under very gentle suction pressure, and then here the laser is shot in between um, the two cells, and it's, these cells are pulled, pulled with one more laser shot there, and come on. It's slow and painful or very stressful as well. And boom. So this is how we get few cells, four to five cells, and um, send it out for <clears throat> genetic testing. This is how we would know if chromosomally the embryo is normal or not, and also if you're testing for any single gene defect. Okay, so b basically, it is a very powerful technique, but it has its own limitations, right? So, um, okay. All right, so if we take cells from this region, the polar region where the ICM is, the aneuploidy is around 56%. And with the same embryo, if you go to a different location, it's around 47%. And in this mid region, this is more like 30%. So within the same embryo, depending upon where we're getting the cells, and this was shown a few years ago by uh, uh, Darren Griffin's work, uh, this is a very powerful observation. And that leads to a lot of kind of debate 
um, whether we should believe the PGT results or not believe, or should we retest it, multiple tests. So there's a debate out there. So, but anyhow, this is observation is published and it's very valid that the different regions of the embryo, they have different composition when it comes to the chromosomal uh, contents. So this is, there's a discordance of the results when we take the cells from different regions of the polar body, uh, from the trope cells. Another approach of testing an egg is basically also um, based on genetic testing, but it is instead of taking the cells from the embryo or the blastocyst, we take the cell from the polar body, even before it is uh, fertilized. And this is more common in some European countries because of some religious beliefs or mandated, state, uh, mandated countries. Uh, it's more common there. And it is believed to be as strong as the aneuploidy, um, aneuploidy screening using TE cells, or trof trophectodum cells. Um, and it is um, less invasive and we would not have to wait we can do a fresh transfer using this technique, but in, in the United States, it, it's, it's not that popular. I will finish with this slide, and this is a model of day 14 human embryo derived from stem cells. So this embryo is a model embryo. Was you, but I think a few months ago, um, it made uh, a big news in the scientific community and also an ethical community as well. Um, it has never been transferred. It was transferred, I mean, this, these kind of models, they were transferred in animal models, never resulted in pregnancy. Um, but, <clears throat> and this embryo was created using stem cells, which means no sperm or egg was used to create this model. But it has, um, um, a, a, a good promise of studying the basic biology of the embryo and tweaking our culture systems. And I hope and pray that nobody dare to transfer such kind of embryos, but who knows down the road what happens. So with that, I thank you very much for your attention.